1999, there was a there was a video series you did, The Lost Art of Hooking, kind of exploded your name onto the scene. It was a it was an interesting time for martial arts in general, grappling in particular. Um, why don't you tell us about how that came about? You know, uh, what what all went into that? Well, I was actually uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Approached on a couple of occasions by, by World Martial Arts to, to do that. And initially, I just backed down. I didn't want to do it. It all stemmed from the internet because I had an internet following. I had trained a few people, the, you know, and uh, they were Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys in, in most instances. And they went on the internet and said, wow, Tony's stuff is real. It's legit. He's doing stuff, man, that I, I've never seen. And, and uh, it's just, it was just really nice, you know. And um, so one thing led to another. And uh, I got approached to, to do the video series. And I said, okay, well, I, you know, obviously I need somebody to demo on. Um, and, you know, Bruce H. Lee, who, was, who, who appeared on the uh, Lost Art of Hooking with me, you know, decided, hey, I'm going to take off of work, take some, vac some vacation. We'll, we'll fly out to uh, New York, upstate New York, or Rochester to be specific. And um, let's do it. So uh, I think we filmed it over the course of three or four days. Actually, there was more footage. We did a strength thing that never got um, released, and uh, we wanted to cover so much more. Uh, I wanted to cover s strikes. I wanted to cover takedowns. I wanted to cover other like knee bars and things. We just people don't understand you're under uh, scheduling. You know, you only have a certain amount of time, and you know, it. it the only. The negative about the law start of hooking is two things. One, it's forever identified me with just ground fighting, which is just this, again, a very small segment of what I do. Uh, and in a street situation, it's the last thing I'm thinking about doing. I'm gonna take you to the ground if I wanna leave a permanent mark. So let's just leave it at that. But I also didn't really know where I was going with this, you know, do I want it to be street fighting, do I want it to be grappling oriented, you know, and I was getting cues from the producer, you know, say something controversial, or do this, do that, because you have to understand the times. 1999 is completely different than now, 2000 and almost 2012, and, um, you know, controversy, I guess, sells, and so I had to say a few things or almost act in a certain way, but overall, I wish that I could have been more, I wish I could have just done it in a different way as far as being more, uh, more even though it was a basic set, I, there was so much that we left out. You know, and it wasn't, I don't want anybody to misunderstand, it wasn't the producers or anybody's fault. There's just only so much time in the day. You can't. You know, that's it. And Bruce, Bruce took a beating in the video, you know. Uh, Paul Vealy sent us sample videos from a couple of people, Mario Sperry being one of them or whatever, just to give us an idea of how their production works and so on, because I've never seen any of the videos. And one thing Bruce and I said was, you know, or Bruce actually brought up, he goes, you know, Tony, we gotta be real, okay? I mean, we can't just be kind to one another. You, you gotta show them the real deal. So I'm like, he said, just don't put me in the hospital. Well, you know, so we were cranking, and unfortunately, I'd have to hold on, and I'm talking to the camera, I'm like, okay, now when you're doing the top, it's like you want to pinch your elbows, and I'm not letting go. I should let go at this point, and poor Bruce, every night after filming, he couldn't even go out for dinner. All he wanted to do was just stay in the, in the, in the motel room, and he ended up, he had some personal issues. He had to fly home early. And I mean, he missed a few days of work because it just his body just took a toll. You know, um, I'm proud to say throughout all of that, there was only two outtakes, and one was because somebody's cell phone went off, one of the cameramen or somebody, and the other one was because Bruce said something to me that I can't repeat, <laughs> and I started laughing, so we had to stop. So what you see is what you get. There was no cue cards, there was no script, there was nothing. It was just, let's do it, let's go. All and um, footage, basically. all off the top of your head, you know, you just, this is how it is. Well, you, I had been doing it up 
that was 99, I had been doing it for over 20 years, you know, it was fine. Um, but again, I wish I could have, I mean, I talked a little bit, I think I remember, I really haven't watched the series, I watched the series once when they gave it to me, you know, to proof it. I, I just don't like watching myself on video, so I really don't, you probably know more about it than I do. But I remember, I think I was talking about movement, slips a little. I wish we could have focused on that a little more, um, and other, other aspects, as I mentioned, you know. Um, but it was a fundamental video series, and it was only meant to be an introduction, and then we were to progress on. Um, unfortunately, as you know, you know, when I got sick a couple years later again, I had a relapse of something that happened to me seriously in 91, uh, or excuse me, in 93. Um, you know, it was, you know, started back up in like 2001. Uh, you know, we never got to doing the follow-up, and uh, but I'm very proud of the video series. I, I, it's it really helped reinvigorate, or, or not even reinvigorate, but it helped introduce catch wrestling to you know a generation of people who may never have heard it, you know, heard of it. Oh, that's that's very true. Uh, you know, I. Not a not a martial arts historian, but you know, lo looking through various books and and reading things on the internet prior to '99, catch was uh, very rarely mentioned. Um, what what information was out there was really obscure. Uh, of course, that did come from an era when people didn't really consider wrestling or boxing a martial art. Um, That's funny. You know, I I know we've discussed that before. What what's your feeling on that attitude? All right. For those of you who are uh, my age or older, you probably remember growing up and not ever, if you did boxing or wrestling, you were never considered a martial arts, okay? Martial artist was, you know, Asian martial arts or something, Taekwondo, Shotokan, blah, blah, blah. We were never considered martial artists. And it's funny now, in the era of mixed martial arts, that boxing techniques and wrestling techniques have such a prominent role when, as I said, just in the scheme of life, just a few short years ago, we weren't considered martial artists. But I can say this, the term martial arts, and Asian martial arts specifically, well, boxing and wrestling predate that, okay? So if you really want to get technical, we probably are the original martial art, okay? If you want to look at it that way. I don't get into the semantics um, and, you know, I'm not about labeling. I mean, I don't really tell people, like when people ask me what I do for a living, it's rarely that I'll say martial arts. Now sometimes I'll say, well, I train MMA fighters, mixed martial artists, but boxing, wrestling, um, you know, it just seems that, you know, on the internet especially, people have to label. And I've been guilty of it too, you know, because I wanted to distinguish, again, getting back to the 1999 era, I don't think a lot of people, they either have selective memory or they weren't around, but they don't remember all the bashing that wrestlers and boxers and various martial artists took uh, from, you know, these internet trolls. We were... Yeah, no, it was, a, it was a wild time, you know, everything was, uh, everything was changing. Everything was changing, yes, and they, they really, really, really made it rough on people who didn't do certain styles and you know eventually I just you know I had enough of it I walked away from the actual internet part of it you know I mean my website has always been up and I've been r producing products steadily since as much as I could but as far as going on forums or whatever, whatever forget it I'm not cut out for that you know I'm not gonna get into arguments with people that don't even have a name you know or whatever my background is when somebody has a beef with you, whether they know you or not, coming from my neighborhood, 90% 90, 90 of the time, they didn't even know you, they just messed with you. But at least it was face to face. You had a chance to defend yourself. Um, this isn't what it's about, you know. Um, and it, it isn't just me that went through it. Every, a lot of people went through it. A lot of people, I remember, walked away. And even outside of the martial arts world, you know, just in, in, in general on the internet, you know, uh, I've seen it in the music industry because you know I'm a I'm big into jazz as a jazz musician. Same thing. These jazz guys are like forget about it. You know, I don't want no part of this. So I yeah I left the internet if you want to call it that. In, you know, 2004 maybe. Or actually, I left the general internet probably in 2000, 2001. I don't remember exactly. 2002 maybe. 
but then I had my own little private forum, and then I finally, you know, just even there, it would get infiltrated with these things. I, I'm not of the ilk to deal with it. I can't. You have a little bit better personality than I do as far as handling that stuff. I, I don't. 